Welcome to my daily review. Today is Monday, July 8th, and it was another winning day for the NASDAQ, as you can see on this NASDAQ daily chart. <clears throat> the NASDAQ advanced 50, we'll call it 51 points today, or 0.28%. And now I had um, some questions about <laughs> the relationship between the NASDAQ and its moving averages as it's gotten uh, you know, quite a bit ahead of its uh, 10 EMA because well, we're in a strong power trend, right? And you know, usually when it gets six, seven, eight percent above, it stalls a little bit. And you can see today it closed uh, 8.2% above the 50, 3.8% above the 21, and 2.1% above the 10. But that's no reason to um, you know, sell a stock or anything. It's just another indicator and something to observe. Um, and if it does pull back in, a lot of stocks will still, uh, you know, probably do okay. Um, you know, the best way to gauge the market is how the leading stocks are doing. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. And uh, we know that the, the mega cap tech stocks are um, driving the NASDAQ, but you don't want to be selling stocks just because a few weeks ago, you know, people were concerned that it broke its upper channel line here on, uh, well, I don't forget the day it was. A lot of people were making drawing lines and making big conclusions when it gapped on June 12th. Well, that was only, um, what was it? It closed at 17,608. And today it closes at, um, you know, 18,403. So you don't want to miss out on eight 800 points because it, it broke above a line. So I'm just using these as reference points, okay? And I don't use them to uh, trade stocks. Just uh, keep it in the back of my head. Just another data point, that's all. Anyway, like I said, the leading, I'm only concerned with leading stocks and that this will tell you the health of the market. And the market looks pretty darn healthy to me. Um, I know there's a lot of, you know, bearish sentiment and there people using their macro data uh, to justify their narrative, but um, I just take it one day at a time. I take a look at the leading stocks, the stocks that I own, if they're doing well, then I consider the market's probably doing pretty well. And the NASDAQ certainly is. Anyway, this is Apple, broke out of this uh, base on base pattern. It's just trading hires up another, uh, you know, three, two thirds of a percent today, doing nothing wrong, you know, a little extended from its uh, moving average. But once again, you know, that's what happens in, in strong markets. Um, leading stocks are hard to buy in a bull market or an uptrending market because they just keep going higher and higher and you don't want to chase them because of a fear of getting, uh, you know, washed out in a pullback. So um, good, these leading stocks that are trading higher are going to make it hard and difficult and challenging for you to get into them. Um, you don't want to you know, buy a high and have it reverse on you. You know, that stands to reason. Uh, this is Microsoft, another strong stock, well above its 10 EMA. Um, you know, give what a little something back today, <laughs> quarter percent. It's been on a real strong run as well. There you could see a um, big move last week and get, what was it up? 4.6% last week and give back a quarter percent today. What a pullback. Um, speaking of pullbacks, meta platforms. And I'm going to go through these quick today because I've, I've got a lot of stuff to get to. There's a lot going on in the market, a lot of uh, good things happening. And um, I just wanted to point out meta had a big week last week, broke above that 500 level. It was up uh, 7% last week, so it gave back 2% today. Um, definitely one if you're now, if you're looking to get into Meta, and if you didn't get it there at the, you know, the 500 and ran up to 540, and you're looking to get back in, maybe it'll pull back close to that 10. You want to get them as near that moving average as you can. But um, definitely a nice pullback today. Amazon, I think I have this on our ready list. Let me see here. Yes, we do at 200. And I think it's just going to have trouble there for a little bit. You know, it's going to provide resistance, you know, until it doesn't. And uh, eventually, it'll, I think it'll trade through there at some point. But, the you know, 200 is a problem. And uh, they're going to report earnings on July 25th. So, you know, if they report strong earnings, it'll probably be not a problem any longer. Now, Amazon should be one of the big AI winners. And then uh, Google, another one, um, another strong stock. Pull back today a little bit. I got to go back to the weekly, uh, you know, because this is um, these stocks were up uh, you know, every day in July. So if they pull back one day, people freak out like, why isn't my stock up? Yeah, it was up 
nearly 5% last week and give back nearly 1% uh, today. So not a big deal for Alphabet. Tesla, now this one, um, this one, got to look at the five minute chart here because it, it gave it up here in the morning. It looked like, oh, okay, people are going to sell. Tesla are going to take profits. It's going to come back. And then buyers came in and really ramped it higher. And um, then, you know, kind of you know, went sideways into the close, but definitely there uh, buyers are supporting this stock as a pullback just a little bit at the open and I traded up to 259 today. It was up half a percent. So uh, Tesla looks strong as well. And then NVIDIA is the last one of these magnificent seven stocks. Made the big run, pulled back to the 21, retested the 21, retested again. It keeps finding support at the 21, and now it traded and closed above its uh, 10, 1.9% above its 10. So NVIDIA looks strong as well. And the reason why these um, semiconductor names were strong was because of Taiwan Semiconductor uh, today talking about pricing. Uh, you know, they have pricing power. This is a very a large semiconductor. You can see it's almost a trillion dollars here, 968 billion. And, you know, made a big move uh, today. Last week it was up as well. So the semiconductors are really uh, showing strength. They're flexing there. Yeah, it was up 6% last week and up another one and a half today. So Taiwan Semiconductor looks fantastic. So does AMD. You know, this is just, just you know, uh, forming a base, you know, undercut is moving averages, traded sideways for a while. And I told you that this pattern looked to me a little bit like Tesla, how it, let me go back to Tesla since I'm doing this exercise, how it just traded sideways for a long, long, long time. And then all of a sudden, boom, traded higher. And I really got some momentum and moved higher. Now AMD traded sideways for quite some time here. Above the 50, above the moving average, and I zoom in here, you can see the uh, 10 and the 21 stacked above the 50. And uh, that looks like it's starting to make its move here, especially on uh, last Friday. That was a heck of a move. Broke above that downtrend line. You can see that in um, AMD last Friday. So that is definitely uh, you know a buy point or a reason to get in um, on Friday and then follow through today, you know, 4%. So AMD looks good. Another one that I wanted to show you on the semiconductors besides Taiwan and AMD was SITM. I'm not going to pretend that I know a lot about this company. Um, and I don't even know how to pronounce it. <laughs> C-Time, if you were uh, speaking Spanish, it would be C or SI-Time or SITM. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, this one consolidated for a long time. You could see the 48 weeks there. And now it's starting to break out of this little pattern here. And uh, this is, uh, well, they're from Santa Clara, so I, I should know them. That's my hometown. But I, I've never heard of this company, really. Um, I mean, I don't follow them that much. Three billion market cap. You know, I, I have heard of them. I shouldn't say I haven't heard of them, but I, I just don't follow them. You, but you can see this little nice consolidation. I mean, you know, they talk about these little Darvis boxes, right? Broke out of the box. Um, last week, last Friday, and now traded higher. Nice 6% move today. So that is a move not to be ignored. Like I say, if you look at the weekly, it's still, you know, still within a base, although extended from its daily moving averages there. Um, just too far extended for me, 10% above the uh, 10. So that will not be on my ready list anytime soon. But I just had to point out, you know, it's the strength of this market. And, um, Part of the reason was um, not only did Taiwan Semiconductor uh, talk about pricing, but SIMO, Silicon Motion, this is an ADR Taiwan-based, uh, they came out boosted guidance, uh, preliminary guidance or whatever. They're still going to report earnings on July 25th, but they raised forward guidance. This thing had a nice move. It was only up 1.3% today. So it closed at 30% of its daily range, which is not really something you want to see. Um, still consolidating within the base, though. I think we had this on our ready list for the last few weeks. It's just kind of like some many of these other stocks set up in a base and just won't won't break out. And um, that news today didn't uh, it didn't break out on that, but it could break out on any any anything you know an upgrade or uh, a new contract or just you know more buyers and sellers and uh, you know people want in and it's going to go higher but um 
raised guidance is obviously a positive thing for the brew. Pure storage was up today after it pulled back to its moving average. It was up slightly in tap. I believe this is the leader in this group, the data storage group. Just surfing the moving averages. That one looks fantastic. XTX, which is Seagate te technology. Um, eh, bounced off to 21 today. Decent move. 1.3%. Definitely a strong stock, but the group, um, you know, saw, saw strength today uh, based on the, um, you know, raised guidance from uh, Silicon Motion and also some of the other hardware names, not just the data storage group, but the um, the peripherals, the data centers like Dell hardware name was up 5% today. That's a nice, strong move. SMCI. I keep watching this one because, I, you know, it's obviously shown the ability to have, um, you know, powerful moves as it did in the past. And a lot of people gave up on this one. Like, no, it's dead at a high, whatever they call it, a climax top. We're going to forget about it. And it did. It had a lot of uh, buyers here. And sometimes buyers get exhausted, right? And so there's nothing left but sellers. So maybe it just forms a base. But I'm continuing to watch this one form a base here. And... Um, it, because it's shown the ability to move and they certainly could you know raise guidance just like silicon motion did today uh they report earnings on what august 6th um yeah up by uh, six percent today or 52 bucks not bad definitely keep my eye on uh, dell and smci and vrt which is another one that's just forming a base here vertiv holdings had a big run hadn't base you know since uh August of 23, excuse me, October of 23, and just ran, 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 you know, talk about a Kelly Slater stock, pull back to the 50 one time, then had that high there of 109. Now it's forming a base. And that's been what, since May 24. So what is that? Six or seven weeks here as it's consolidating in this base, six weeks. So this is the seventh week. So definitely keep an eye on uh, VRT. And I'm not going to wait till 109 to get into this one. You could say that it <clears throat> broke above a downtrend line, but not powerfully uh, enough for me to uh, get involved with this one. But and uh, not yet. It's just still forming a base. All right. And the last one, you know, that it's not really in this group, but one that I <laughs> I'm going to throw into this group is uh, Camtech. This one is a super strong stock. It's just getting too extended for me. It makes me uncomfortable. I bought it when it was down here in the 90s, and it's, it's done nothing wrong. You know, there's no shakeout, really. It's being supported at the 21, as I, uh, you know, continue to show. But today, it's still close. 72% of its daily range made a new high of 139.40. And you can see, you know, that if you, you got to be picky, you got to pick your spots, you got to wait. And if it does come back to a moving average, maybe that'll be a time to uh, get in on this one. They report earnings August 7th. You really have to be aware these days of when your stocks are reporting earnings. Um, maybe not this week, but starting next week, we're going to have a whole slew of earnings. All right, that's enough of that. I'm going to go to the drug stocks. Eli Lilly bought a company today. They're, they have a broad portfolio. They have a ton of cash. Um, you know, just broke out of the double bottom base and just doing the Kelly Slater surf the moving averages, hanging 10. There's nothing to do here with Eli Lilly. I mean, if you own it, you know, you just let, let your winners run. This is, this is, you know, prototype, let your winner run stock. So it's running, let it run. It's got 872 billion market cap, likely going to go to a trillion, probably going to go to a thousand bucks here before the end of this year. Uh, just a really strong stock. Novo Nordisk, this one has a five weeks tight pattern that it's working on. Uh, you know, it had this base, a cup of handle, and it broke out. Now it's just traded tight for five weeks, and today was tight again. So it might make a six week tight pattern. It's only 3% off of its, um, you know, all time high, though. So this, this is a pretty strong stock, too. Uh, and, you know, I have a lot of um, biotech stocks that I want to show. And I just, um, they, they're more in favor today. They, a lot of them had good days. This is ADMA. I listened to their uh, conference call. They, these guys have real sales and real earnings. And uh, yeah, they're going to earn uh, 35 cents this year. You could see the growth and, um, you know, next year as well, 50% growth. 
Um, three million shares traded. It's only eleven dollars stock. I get it, but this is definitely one to watch. Um, I believe it's going to trade a lot higher than you know twelve bucks or whatever it is now. Eleven sixty four, and you can see that that um, <laughs> that moves pretty powerful for ADMA. I just want to put put this on the radar. I'm not saying go out and buy it tomorrow, but put it on your radar. TGTX is another one that I. I know the CEO that these guys could raise guidance at any time they want to and blow up the shorts, but they haven't done it. They'll probably do it on their earnings report though. The big, they have not included the um, VA contract into their calculus here. So when they do that, that's about a 75% boost to their, their raise guidance from the prior quarter, which was what about 260 uh, million. So if they include their uh, army contract, VA contract of 188 million, <laughs> that's quite a boost. So they're kind of sitting in the catbird seat here and they could do it whenever they want. I like it at 1902. I mean, if you didn't get in already, I mean, this is a stage one base breaking out above that level uh, today, 1950, not bad. You know, it's also got the standard buy point of 22, 67, if you want to wait that long, but I, I, I think this has got a lot of shorts in it. When it moves, it's really going to move fast. Um, and it's probably going to need a data point like, um, you know, an earnings uh, report where they uh, raise guidance. So anyway, that's enough for TGTX. I like the more large and the liquid ones because they, they're not as volatile. But this is Regeneron, 116 billion market cap. You can see a pullback to its 21 after the cup with handle breakout found support still looks pretty good also vertex is another one of these large 124 billion market cap stocks broke out pull back to the 21 and found support a couple of times you know the test and the retest you don't want them squatting there for too long this thing's got to get off that moving average but it looks pretty good and today had a nice day and closed uh, you know, 90% of the daily range. That's a nice hammer candle for Vertex. A couple others that, you know, I was going to put on the ready list, but I didn't. Uh, e e M EBS. This one is one to watch for, for sure. This is um, Emergent Bio Solutions. And you can see the earnings line heading straight north, and the stock is doing the same. Uh, just one to watch. That's all I'm saying. Not going to, you know, go out and buy it tomorrow, but this one's got a lot of strength. And those ones catch my eye. And the other one is a halo, which, you know, has str real strong sales and earnings growth profile, but, um, you know, made a new high on last week sometime or well, uh, July 1st. And then um, I guess that was last Monday. And today it approached that, but did not make a new high. It's the, the high is 53.22. And today's high is 53.17. But definitely forming this, you know, box type pattern there. And uh, Halozyme could break out at any time. All right, that's it for the drugs. I have to go to the shoe group because they've been punished since the Nike earnings report. And I think at some point Wall Street's going to figure it out <laughs> that the shoes, it's not the shoes, or maybe it is the shoes, but it's not the Nike shoes that people are buying. It's the other shoes. And uh, sometimes Wall Street, you know, they get it wrong. They they over correct. They over, you know, they, they shoot first and ask questions later. And so uh, Crocs sold off, and now it's just squatting at its 50, which I do not like this action at all. It's really got a you know, power off that moving average, and the longer it sits there, the less I like it. Deckers is kind of doing the same thing, where it pulled back below the 50, and now it's just sitting there squatting at the 50. So like I say, you know, maybe the earnings report from Deckers on uh, July 25th will, will uh, get Wall Street back in their good graces. I, I don't know. Uh, Crocs reports on the 18th, so they're a week ahead. And then on holdings is a little later, I believe, yeah, August 13th. But you can see they all have the same similar pattern. This is one of the strongest groups. It was in the top three or four, and now it's uh, slipping a little bit. And you can see why. They all have the same profile. A lot of selling recently. Since the Lululemon um, Nike reports, they just, they're just selling uh, you know these, these good stocks. Uh, I hate the term throwing the baby out with the bathwater. That's pretty much what they're doing just because Nike and Lululemon uh, stink. They figure those are the big uh, retail retailers in the groups. And if they're not going to be able to make it, well, those other little guys can't, right? Well, the problem is those little guys are taking the market share from the big guys. 
And uh, at some point, they'll be rewarded, I believe. <clears throat> Talk about stealing market share. There's Elf. This one's starting to grind on me, too. It's um, It's got the cup with handle pattern. Pull back to the 21. Tried to bounce a little bit today. It was up to 206. Uh, closed 57% of its daily range. But it's got to, <laughs> for me, it's got to move higher and get above the old 221.83. Uh, for me to sell it, <laughs> I'm in it. You know, I bought it back by the 170 when it broke above its downtrend line. I forget, I forget where we had this thing. But anyway, the the standard buy point is 202.58, and I just like to see it make a high above that 221. And they're they're definitely taking market share. I have no doubt when they report earnings on August 8th, they're going to be saying the same thing they've said for the last 25 quarters. You know, they're they're just growing like a weed, and they're meeting their customers where they're at, like on um, TikTok or Roblox or Twitch or wherever. Um, very smart management there at ELF. Anyway, bros, another one taking share from Starbucks. Now, Starbucks is the big kahuna, and Starbucks looks like, you know, it's, it's really ill, sick. It's in the infirmary, but uh, you don't want to you don't want to mess with any stock that looks like that. Um, bros definitely has this uh, growth profile that we like. I mean, 39% sales growth, triple digit earnings growth, and it's just making these higher lows. You know, every time it comes back to a low, find support, higher low, and of course, higher highs as well. Dutch Bros looks good. Kava looks good. Um, I was going to put this one on the right list. It's got this little box or, you know, shelf type pattern, if you will. And it's trying to break above it. You know, I would, I would like to just see it clear the 100 level, just be done with it and just take off. But it's probably not going to do that. It's going to do what Spotify is doing and CrowdStrike, just grinding and Elf, just grinding sideways and just wearing you out. Um, so if you're one of these impatient investors, um, this might not be the stock for you. But if you, you know, want to hold a winner and have the patience, you know, and just, you know, buy gradually, you know, every, and when it pulls back every time you can see as it pulls back, it's making higher lows as well. And uh, so if you just, you know, nibble a little here and there, I know most people like to buy when it's, when they're up and not when they're down, but uh, I don't know, to each their own. Um, as long as it's finding support at the 21 and the 21 is riding higher, it's going to go higher. It's just going to take time. And you have to know your own personality and yourself. If you have the patience to sit in something like that, um, one, uh, company that I just have to mention in this, uh, retail restaurant group is, uh, this is an avoid CMG. When you have a 50 for one stock split and you take the, uh, float from 27 million to 1.3 uh, 1.35 billion, 1 billion, 350 million. Uh, that's a lot of shares anyway, too many. So this has become a big battleship. It was a speedboat. That was just ripping along the water and now it's a big battleship and there's just too much supply um and you know if you had so just say you had 10 shares and now you have what 500 or whatever you're gonna cut loose some of them there's just so many shares floating around out there um so this is this is just gonna have to form a base and it's gonna be a lot slower from now on it's not going to be the uh, speedboat like i said anyway changed uh character and it's just, to me, it's one to avoid. All right, I did mention Spotify. I got to get to some of these software names. This one's just killing the drill. This one's just killing me. <laughs> I'm holding it, uh, and I just try not to look at it because I know that just one day it's going to break out, but it wasn't going to be today, probably not tomorrow, maybe not this week or next week. But at some point, Spotify is going to break out. They have earnings on July 23rd, so it's... Uh, two weeks and a day from today. But, you know, this one, once again, you know, making these higher lows, it's, it's, in, and then moving averages are grinding higher. Um, so as long as that occurs, you know, the stock price is going to go higher. <laughs> Although those moving averages are going sideways too. And they're going to start converging pretty soon. Um, let's go to the weekly on this Spotify. So you can see the consolidation. You can also see the earnings line heading North, but you can see the consolidation pattern, the, uh, Three weeks tight in there. And uh, this week, you know, you think, oh my God, three weeks tight, it's going to break out. Nope. It was just flat today. What was it down uh, 1%? It 
just can't move. You know, <laughs> you hope it's going to move. And I know some people are concerned about this bearish engulfing candle. I wouldn't worry about it. It just traded down to its 21, made a higher low. You know, it, it looks fine to me, but man, they will wear you out. Crouch Strike kind of doing the same thing here. Um, another one that I own, so this is why I'm showing it, but, you know, just a, once again, like a Darvis box pattern or a shelf pattern, if you will. And I, I like it more above 394, 64. You know, I don't like it below. And the reason why is because I think once it gets above that area, it'll attract more buyers. Um, and there you can see it's got a three weeks tight as well. So to me, it's like insurance, you know, wait, wait for the new high and then we get in. So um it didn't make a new high today, but man, it was down most of the day. I was looking at the, uh, if you look at the five minute chart, yeah, it just, it went up the first first bar and then sold off sharp. There's a couple stocks that did that today and then battled back the whole way. So some buyers came in and it closed, you know, a dollar higher. Um, to me, this is stealth accumulation uh, in CrowdStrike where it's just trading sideways. Not a lot of sellers, not a lot of buyers either, but institutions are comfortable holding this one and when they come back in for the next bite when the big shark or the big whale comes in for the bite it's going to move this thing uh they don't report earnings till august 29th all right uh, okay what else do i have here oh estc i have quite a few software names and this one is kind of trading sideways but if you look at the you know higher lows once again um, the moving averages are trading higher. Found support at the 10 today. This one's biting its time. It doesn't report earnings until August 30th, so it's got a long ways to wait. Um, I had the buy point here. I don't know if this is on our list this week. I don't think it is, but I might put it back on. Uh, I really like the pattern set up here. As long as it uh, stays above its uh, 21 here, you can see the higher lows. The, the profile looks fantastic for Elastic Data Dog. Pulled back today, got a little ahead of itself here on Friday, had a big move, got 5.4% above its 10, pulled back near its 10 today. So um, Datadog looks fine. Once again, sold off. I believe that was earnings. They don't report till August 7th and now um, grinding higher. So still consolidating within a base is Datadog. Um, ServiceNow downgraded today, did not handle the downgrade that well. Down 5%, slice the 10, you know, doing nothing wrong, still consolidating within a base. But I, I'm always interested to see how stocks uh, respond to um, um, downgrades. And, you know, 5% move to the downside is not that great. Still only 6% uh, off its 52-week high. Uh, looking okay. You know, want to see it supported at the 21 here. And let me see. Oh, Palantir. A lot of people ask about Palantir. I don't like Palantir. Um, nothing personal. It's just, you know, got a big float to, you know, 200, 200 and something million or 200 billion out of some crazy amount for a stock that just IPO'd. Uh, this has got way too much supply. That's why I don't like it. But you can see it's broke out of a stage one base, you know, and then had a base on base uh, stage two pattern. And now it's in stage three later stage bases here for Pellinger already. And it's, uh, you know, it's set up in a base here, and this is why people, you know, like it and think it could uh, break out higher. And it, it might. Um, I just, it's a slower mover, and it's just got too much supply. And that's why I don't feature it very often. But, you know, I do recognize that a lot of people like this stock, and it's going to be a you know, big AI winner, allegedly. Um, this is uh, Monday or M Mandy, whatever one <laughs> you you want to refer to. And this one's, I, I didn't have it on our ready list this week. I'm trying to keep the ready list condensed and focused. And uh, I might have to put a couple more on because I like this setup here. I like the pullback today of nearly 2%. Um, yeah, and it's still a little bit above the 10. So we're going to keep an eye on that one. Anyway, that's it for the software names. Just got to point out that uh, Glowworm or Corning, GLW, raised guidance today and had a move that cannot be ignored, Dan, up 12% with 448% uh, above average daily volume. And uh, that that is a heck of a move for the glowworm. Congrats to the longs there. So, I, you know, whenever I see that, I look around the peer group and uh, see what else is doing. And this, this one already broke out, moving higher. 
pull back to its 10 one time. And so this is one to watch for sure. Um, not going out and buying it here, but anything that's, you know, trending like that, that's what trend traders, you know, <laughs> love. And the other one was uh, HLIT. And this one um, did not bounce to, well, it's up nearly 2%, just consolidating in this stage one base. Um, when you see, yeah, look at the earnings line there. But if, um, if uh, Corning's doing well, maybe these guys will report something uh, positive as well on the 29th. Anyway, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. Sup for an honor, the great Steve Jobs. I have one more thing. I just want to you know make you aware. I know I talk about this a lot, but this Monday morning gap up is a sucker's play. And uh, we saw it again today. This one was uh, trading at all time highs and um, pre-market. And I bought a stock one time at an all time high in pre-market. It was like, let's just call it a hundred dollar stock was the 52. It was the all time high. And I bought it in pre-market at 101. Then it opened below you know, 100 and then went down and then um, never made 101 ever again. It just sold off and that was the top of the stock. So I was the dummy that bought in pre-market at 101. And if you look, because only the regular session is counted, and I looked at the, the all-time high, it was $100, and I bought a stock above its all-time high. So I vowed I'm never going to do that again. This is trading at a, a high in a pre-market, and it opened higher, 1575. Uh, 10 minutes in, 1571. Five minutes later, whoosh. The trap door opened and all the longs got swept away. 1463. So that's more than a dollar move in five minutes. Bar. Yeah, some buyers came in and drove it higher, but there were sellers all day in this one. A uh, little bit of buying into the close, which you like to see, but that is the trap door on a Monday morning that you want to avoid. And I, I, I repeat myself often on this concept, you know, and I know it's very tempting. I even had professional traders that I trade with uh, contact me in the morning saying, "Iron looks like it's going to rip and run." And I said, "Yeah, it does, but I'm I'm not I'm not buying this thing there. Heck no. Um, I like the stock. I think it's going to twenty bucks. Um, it's a data center Bitcoin play, but yeah, I'd rather buy it here on a pullback than chasing this up the fourteen ninety five. I do like it though above the fourteen ninety five. It, if it pulls back to the ten and bounces above the fourteen ninety five. Yeah, I would say that's all go time. But um, yeah, this is uh, Monday morning, okie doke, rope a dope. Don't fall for that stuff. Um, I've, I've learned the lesson so you don't have to. Definitely do not fall for these Monday morning gappers unless there's a, an earnings report where there's massive volume coming in and a real liquid stock I will buy, uh, something like that. I did it with Palo Alto Networks a couple quarters ago. And um, then I will buy, but this was, there was no news here and it wasn't a lot of volume. It was just, looked like a lot of uh, tape painting. Obviously that's what it was when you look at the, you know, the five minute chart and um, you know, fools rush in and then uh, you know, there are bag holders. But I believe if you bought that and you got sucked in today, I think you'll be okay by the end of the week or, you know, by the end of the month. You could see it made this big run, got this high tight flag type of a pattern. And I, I believe it's going to trade higher um, in time, but you got to be patient, you know, not going to go up every day or every week. All right. That's it for me. Thank you for watching at mcstockcharts.com. Uh, we never give up. Have a great evening.